All right, here we go. In studio, multi-track recording. Uh, the last lecture went a little bit long. This is lecture four, and so I decided to break it up into one more part. Hopefully, I, this one won't go much more than five or ten minutes. Okay, we already talked in the last lecture about multi-track recording. It's a little bit different when we're talking about recording in a studio. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually, it is a lot easier to draw it and describe it. Now, when we're talking about multi-track recording, we were saying before, like on a stage, that each source has their own microphone. Well, if you're in a studio, you take it a step further, because as we also mentioned on the stage, you do run into a problem with bleed over, where what that means is that um, maybe you know, if you got a trumpet behind a flute, yes, each of them has their own microphone, but then that flute's microphone will probably pick up that trumpet. When you're in a studio, you have the luxury of actually putting each source of sound in its own soundproof room, so you only record that sound. So you'll have the singer, pardon my lousy drawing here, in one room, you'll have maybe a guitar player, in another room, you'll have your drums, and maybe you'll have a bass player, and again I can't draw worth anything, saxophone, or a, a trumpet, if you want to have a trumpet in there, I don't know, and then any, you know, maybe, uh, maybe another singer in here backup singer or something. And then you'll have your control, all of them will be sent again to your mixing board. And your engineer will record each of them on their own. Each one is recorded separately, each one is taken care of on its own way. And by the way, pre pretend that's a bass. Um, now the advantage of this is that it is completely clean audio. completely clean audio. You can, if, let's say, our singer screws up, well, we can just go ahead and re-record it. If he screws up again, we'll re-record it again. If the drummer messed up, we can go ahead and re-record the drummer. If the guitar messes up, we can re-record the guitar. So far and so forth. We can record, re-record anything that we want to re-record, and then bring it back in and mix it in. This is a huge advantage in, in that you're able to have complete control and not have to redo everything from scratch. You can even, a lot of times, they'll lay down just the drums first. Go check, we got those. And then everyone else will come in later, and the guitar player will then play to the drums. The bass player will then play and mix to the guitar player. The trumpets may lay in some background tracks. And then finally, once all that is done, our singers come in and they lay down their vocals. So it has a lot more freedom. Now the problem you get with this though is that one, it costs a whole lot of money. It is expensive. Expensive to build this. You have to have a dedicated location. You have to have wiring built throughout the entire location. You have to have staff that are highly skilled in repairing these things and building these things and updating these things because technology constantly updates. So it's not out of the question to have a recording studio such as this to cost, oh, you know, upwards of 200000 300000 maybe even a million or more dollars for locations that have this kind of control. So it's pricey. Also, artists aren't, aren't the biggest fans of it because it's less personal. You, if you got a very improvisational group, they're not going to, if they're in their own separate worlds and they can't, if they can't see each other or they're just seeing each other through little windows, it's hard for them to interact with each other. And so improvisational groups tend not to like them. Um, some of you may have heard of the singer John Cougar Mellencamp. He hates this kind of recording. Everything he does has to be with his whole band all together at one time in the studio. A number of artists are like that, but then another of, of other artists prefer having that complete control 
build it in the studio, and then they try and figure out how do we recreate that sound on stage afterwards. A lot of times that's why a studio album sounds so different than a live album, because they're trying to recapture that lightning in a bottle and achieve something that, that that's difficult to do live sometimes. Uh, so that's the studio process. You have separate rooms where for each person or each unit have their own rooms and then they are recorded individually so that they can be you know, raised or lowered as needed and you can always redo things if you need to redo them. All right, that is the in-studio process. Now, for a multi-track studio recording, who is in charge? What kind of jobs are there? Because I know some of you are probably interested in going in the audio industry. And what kind of jobs do you have out there? Well, there is this website that I have here, and I will have a link to it on Blackboard, so don't worry about writing this down right now. And we're going to go here and take a look at it. There are a number of other places you can look, but this is kind of your traditional way of looking at it. And I'm going to zoom in here. Now, they start with the cleaner on this list. I, I wouldn't take that too seriously, but, you know, if you want to get into the industry, I've heard of crazier ways of getting jobs. Receptionist, again, I mean, when you're working your way up, sometimes you got to start anywhere. But really, it really starts with the booking manager. This is the person that sets up schedules for people to come in, starts making appointments. That's an important job. But when you really start getting down to it, it starts with the studio manager right here. This website has it listed that, go by what it says here, zooming out. In many cases this is the same as booking manager, but in larger studios the studio manager runs the place and the pay is very good. Alright, but let's say you're the kind of person that wants to get their hands dirty finally. That's where the studio technician comes in. In some studios there is a technical crew with junior techs and more experienced techs qualifications are generally a technical degree or similar similar to what you guys will be getting here and pay can be quite good um, yeah for a studio technician this is the person that knows how to wire everything this is the person that will set microphones up in different spaces because let's say in and Studio One is where you want to lay up your singer. And you'll figure out what microphone is best for those that that kind of a person. You'll figure out how how it's going to be patched. You'll patch it into the patch bay. These are all. Also, these are things that when you take your first audio course here at Cincinnati State, you'll learn pretty much most of these these positions as as a, a studio technician. All right, you got the runner. Uh, a runner is the lowest engineering position. This is the person that is just starting out. This is the person that gets coffee. This is the person that the engineer would go, hey, I need you know 10 XLR cables that are 25 feet each in five minutes, and you have to go run and find those 10 XLR cables. Um, you might have to build some patches or other sorts of things. You have your assistant engineer. This is a person that sort of worked their way up a little bit. Um, you may still may have to... Whoops. Sorry, it's loading around here. This is the person that... Um, still may have to get some things for folks. You know, it's poor, the pay is poor to okay, but the assistant engineer is, is what it sounds. So the, the technical engineer, they're the, they're the person that helps out the most. Then you have the recording engineer. This is the person that actually gets their hands dirty with the musicians, where after everything is actually wired, because again, the technical engineer, studio technician, they're the person that runs the wires, they're the person that sets up the, the microphones, determines what microphones are the best microphones for that situation. But the recording engineer is the person that is in charge of the mix. And they're the person that will deal with with the the what you normally think of when you see someone working in the studio. That's the person that you're seeing behind those 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 faders and working around with it. Uh, many studios don't have staff and engineers anymore, as it says. This can tend to be more of a freelance position, but if you are good, you will... I, I know a number of people that sort of float from studio to studio to studio because they, they trust that person's ear and that that person knows what they're doing. Because it's to be honest, it's a lot more to it. We'll talk a lot more about this going forward as we move into the next next section of information. 
but there's a lot more than just turning the volume up on a single source or bringing the volume down. That the recording engineer also has a strong understanding of frequency and frequency response and how different frequencies play and they actually make adjustment to, to the boost or drop specific frequencies not just entire microphones um, on each pot and they have they have a lot of background in that area. All right, recording producer this is very rarely an option um, as most are freelance yeah recording producer this is the you know the person that you think of as sort of like the the behind the scenes person this is the person that works very closely with the artist um, sometimes they're the, they're the writer sometimes they um, they're a person that suggests bringing in different instruments or different sounds pulling different sounds out uh, the producer actually has kind of come more into prominence over the last 15 or 20 years than they used to uh, this is another person that tends to be more of a freelancer um, and it's kind of a, a lot of people look at this as a glory position right now but yeah, you know, it depends on where how much emphasis you want to put on the artist uh, versus the, the the person singing or the people playing the instruments versus a person that has an overall idea or vision for what it should oh, the the final sound should be. Right, mastering engineer. These are folks that I often say kind of fall under the dark arts um, of audio. Uh, a person that is a mastering engineer that's really good, a highly skilled mastering engineer, is just a genius as far as I'm concerned. This is, this is a person that has a very well-trained ear. And reason being is that if, let's say, you have 16 or 20 or 40 tracks of audio, well, when we listen to those 40 tracks of audio, they are going to be mixed down into just two tracks we talked before because when we listen to music we listen to music in two tracks we listen to music on headphones with a left and a right ear or on speakers with left and right speakers and the reason that is is because we are trying to re when you re we play back audio like that you're trying to reproduce what it sounded like when it actually was recorded or re you as if you had heard it rather in you know the quote unquote real world and the mastering engineer their job is to take those 30, 40, 100, whatever tracks of audio, mix them down to two tracks in a way that when we listen to it, it feels as if we're in that space. So they won't put all the drum, the drums on equally on both left and right channels. They won't put the guitar equally on left and right channels. They'll figure out a way to give us an, uh, a, an auditory experience that feels, if they're good, they give us they'll, they'll give us an auditory experience that feels as if or not better than as, as if we had actually been there in the real world. All right, so that's the different jobs that you have here in a recording studio. Now, there are other jobs in audio. In particular, let me get this back up. In particular, in, in film and video production, it also needs excellent audio engineers. Um, let me see what's my next slide on here. Yeah, an excellent audio engineer in the field because if you're recording interviews, if you're recording live music, um, but on camera, like if you're recording, if you're doing a live production of a music of a music video, if, or if you're doing something for the, a symphony, if you're recording you know, the fit, the actual conducting of a symphony, you need strong audio engineers in those situations as well. As well, if you're filming a movie, you need somebody that knows how to record sound effects. You need somebody that knows how to record the voice of people talking in a room. And there are many, many, many problems that these kind of audio engineers can will run into and having a good field audio engineer is worth their weight in gold as well. There are many problems that can arise when you're doing live audio. Chief among them would be natural sounds like lawnmowers or you got computer fans which actually my, my computer fans going right now you have what's called wind noise. Now wind noise, if for, for those of you that may not be familiar with that, is that if you have a microphone and it's just floating out there in the air and a strong wind goes past it, it's going to get this you know, kind of sound. And that obviously is not something that you want. 
but you also if you have there's a refrigerator motors or just rooms that have too much reverb and reverb is that slight echo that you may hear in in rooms particularly rooms that are have very flat hard walls and hard floors um, what I'd like you to do is actually maybe even pause this video for a second and just listen to where you are and listen to the sounds that you normally don't pay attention to. So go ahead and do that now for a second. Those are all sounds that we don't notice, but a microphone does. And a microphone can, in a big way, notice those sounds. And then we get to our audio mix, and suddenly things just don't work. Because even though in the space it sounded natural to us, when you get in the edit room, you have to make things sound natural to the real world. And, or not to the real world, but to the television world or the audio world. And so you need to find ways to get over those problems. A refrigerator motor, you, may, you just tune it out. But uh, that microphone on your camera will not tune out that mo that microphone or will not tune out that refrigerator noise. That computer running in the background, it will not get rid of it. If you are filming a scene by the ocean, I guarantee you, you will have wind noise that you need to be careful of coming into that microphone. Lawn mowers are th that are listed there as well. All of those sorts of things, and then again, the all powerful reverb, that sort of half echo. Um, if you're ever in a room that's hardwood floors. Just while, while everyone else is quiet, just clap once, and you'll hear your clap. It's a half second off, or off, off, off after that. And you may not notice it in normal talking, but again, on when you record it on a microphone, it suddenly becomes incredibly evident. Now, how do you get around this? There are several possible solutions. The first one being, pretty obviously, turn off as many extraneous sounds as you can. That means if you have a computer running, you turn off the computer. If someone's mowing their lawn, you wait till they're done, or you go over and ask them if you wouldn't mind stopping for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, if there's an air conditioner running in the house, you turn the air conditioning off. Yeah, HVAC is horrible that way. Um, it's called HVAC, by the way. Um, refrigerators, unplug the refrigerator. And just so you know, if, with unplugging a refrigerator, it's actually okay. Virtually every modern refrigerator is designed that as long as you keep that door shut, it will keep everything perfectly cold for at least 24 hours. So if people start freaking out, I can't unplug my refrigerator, yes, they can. Just, you know, just remember to plug it back in when you're done. Uh, another way for getting rid of that reverb we talked about sometimes is to get your microphone as close as you can to your subjects. The closer you get the microphone to your subject, the more the microphone will just pick up that person or that sound you're trying to get and makes it much less likely that you'll hear that reverb because the, the person's voice will be so much more powerful than the sound of the, the extraneous room. Also, the closer you get that microphone to the person, the less sensitive you have to make your microphone. So that if you keep making your microphone less sensitive, it will still, since it's close, it'll pick up the voice very strong. But because you're not making it overly sensitive, it's less likely to pick up that reverb or other sounds that you don't want. And then lastly, for wind noise, if the wind's not horrible, you can get a windscreen for your microphone, which is also sometimes called a dead cat. This is a dead cat, and actually this right here is called a blimp. These are all things that you can use to, to help eliminate these problems. All right, if all else fails, or not if all else fails, rather, um, another way you can go about to help yourself in post-production is to record what is called room tone. Now, room tone is when you have everyone and everything in that space be quiet. You turn off, you, keep, you leave off whatever you've had left off, and you just have everyone be as quiet as possible because you're trying to get that sound of silence, which isn't actually very quiet. 
There's still going to be sound of air, just air in the room. There's going to be natural sounds outside that you just can't get rid of. There's just going to be just natural, every room, there's no such thing as a completely quiet room. So then you record that room for at least one minute. And the reason for this is so that when you get into the mix, is that when you get into the into your final mix you have a baseline so that let's say you're 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 cutting between two different angles recorded two different times and maybe the audio is a little bit different from place to pay, place to place well you mix in that room tone that kind of hides that difference um, let's say you're doing and it's there's a fight scene and you need to dub in punches or kicks or bottles breaking. Well, if you mix in that room tone, suddenly the you know that sort of extraneous sound effect you laid in doesn't sound like like this weird sound effect you downloaded off of some website or or recorded in a nice you know sound room. It suddenly sounds natural because you have that natural room tone, the natural ambience already mixed into it, and it really helps to hide a lot of those problems. All right. However, if the situation is bad enough, you may have to resort to what is called ADR. ADR uh, stands for Automatic Digital Recording, I believe. But essentially what ADR is, it stand, it's, it's looping is another word for it. So if the dialogue cannot be salvaged, let's say you're recording by the beach and the wind noise is just too horrible, or there's just so many sounds that you can't get rid of. Let's say you're maybe trying to shoot a dialogue scene between two people in the middle of a mall, of a shopping mall, and it just sounds horrible. Then you're going to need to loop it. And what that means, hang on, I'm trying to turn this off, is that the talent will be brought after you record it your talent will be brought back into the recording studio and they will re, they will watch their image and listen to what they recorded and then they'll try and talk over and match their wording over the, their lip movements and this is called looping it's also called ADR and it's done all the time the best way to actually do ADR is if, let's say, whatever kind of microphone you're using in the field, you want, and if, let's say, the microphone is two feet away from your subject in the field, then you, you want to make sure you're using the exact same microphone when you record ADR, and you want to make sure that microphone is also two feet away from your subject so that it will match. The sound, the presence of that audio will match. 